Hello everyone and welcome back. Before we start this exercise, you need to download the worksheet which has been linked below. It's just about four pages. The first page has things you will need, just basics, pencils, rulers and whatnot. And then fraction decimal conversion table. You can do this exercise in inches or centimeters. It just helps you convert your fractions to decimal places just to make your math easier. Next page, you have a sample of the measurements you're going to need for this exercise. If you're not sure how to take measurements, I have linked the measurements video and art school below for you to help, for you to follow along so you can take the right measurements. Right, so we need your full length front first, and then you need your full length back, you need center back, you need half your center back, neck, across shoulder, half your across shoulder, your shoulder, bust depth, your bust, half bust, quarter bust, your upper bust, a quarter of your upper bust, and across chest, half across chest, across back, half across back, your waist, quarter of the waist, your apex, half your apex, your side measurement and your armhole. Next, we have some quick calculations. Our neck is times 0.2. That's basically a fifth of the neck and minus a quarter of an inch or one eighth of an inch, depending on how tight you want the neck to be. It's really a variable. I recommend it an eighth for starters. When you do the math, you get your answer. Next is your neck depth. You're going to take the neck width we calculated and add three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Your armhole depth is three quarters of your bust depth. Your front bust is a quarter of your bust plus three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Your front upper bust is a quarter of your upper bust plus three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. You have your front waist, the quarter of your waist plus three eighths of an inch or one centimeter, and your back waist is minus three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. Finally, you have a blank page for you to use to do your own and a sample of what we are going to be drafting. These letters are not for you to memorize, they're just for communication for us to know what we're doing at any given point. So I will see you in the draft. First, as always, I start with a clean line on the side of my paper and we'll start from the bottom, we'll label that point A and A to B is your full length front. From B, you're going to square across again and just create a clean perpendicular line. We should probably make it shorter than I did here. This one is a bit long. Anyway, from B to C, you're going to put in your half across shoulder. C to D, we're just going to put in a short guideline of about two inches or five centimeters. B to E, we'll put in our neck width. B to F, we're going to put in our neck depth. And we'll connect that. Well, first we're going to put in our shoulder. E to G is our shoulder. You basically just want to put in your shoulder measurements and see wherever it stops on that guideline, that C to D guideline. and connect. Now we're going to draw a short guideline at right angles to the shoulder. This is not necessary, it just helps when you're connecting your front and back pieces. Now 
also at point F, just a straight line, right angles. And then we'll put in our curve. Now we are putting in our bust depth, B to H, straight down. Square short guideline. Put in your front bust measurement. This is H to I. Now we're going to put in our armhole depth as B to J. Square across. J to K, we put in our front upper bust. Using the upper bust just helps us make that place a bit tighter so that it's not as wide as the bust line. And it also helps to establish where our side starts from. Next, you find a midway point between F and J. You put in point L. This is going to be our chest line. It helps us establish the width of our chest and where our armhole sits. Call this point L to M. Now just put a guideline from point M up and down. Now you can draw in your armhole. I'm going to square up from the shoulder again. Once again, it's really just to help you connect the front and back bodice pieces easily. Just a short guideline and that will help me draw my curve. As long as it touches the guideline on M, anywhere is good. You can do it in one go or you can just do it in two goes like I'm doing here. And that is our armhole complete. Next, we're going to put in the side measurement. Draw a straight line from K to N, but you're going to pass through I. So make sure it's touching K and I, and you put in your side measurement, and we'll call that point N. Next, we're going to put in our apex. This is one of the most important measurements. It's the center of the bodice or the highlights of the bodice. We call that point H to O. From A to P, you're going to take your H to O measurement minus three eighths of an inch or one centimeters. This is to angle it nicely. So when you sew it up, it looks very aesthetic. Connect O to P. We're almost done. Now we need to complete the waist. What we're going to do, you're going to measure line OP, which is your first dart leg. So for instance, if it's five inches or six inches, I'm simply going to use that measurement to create some guidelines. So from point O, I will simply pivot my ruler, mark the five inches, pivot it, mark the five inches, and so on. So I'm basically making a series of dots all at the same length of OP. So I just make a few of them about two inches wide. And then from point N, I'm going to put in the rest of the waist. 
So N to Q is your front waist measurement minus line AP. All this is explained in the worksheet and of course in the written instructions on the website for you to follow. I'm just making sure point Q lands anywhere on that guideline I created. And then finally, we connect O to Q to complete the second dart leg. Of course, we'll true the dart when we cut it out. This is just to help things go on faster. And that's the front. Moving on to the back. For the back, we need to establish where the back center back line will be. So from point J, we're going to put in our half bust measurement. We're going to call that small a. We're just going to square up a line up and down. This is essentially our center back now. Now to establish our back height. From a to b, it is your half center back measurement plus three quarters of an inch or two centimeters. From B to C, you're going to put in your center back measurement. And then from C to D, you're going to put in your full length back measurement. All of this is really just to help us establish the balance of the back so that it is properly aligned with the front. Here, I'm just squaring off a short guideline from point C, which we'll use later. D to E, we're going to do the same thing. Put in your half across shoulder. E to F, we're going to square down our guideline. So it should be the same thing as the back, sorry, as the front. Now between B and A, we'll find the midpoint. This is for our across back measurement. Call that point G, square across, put in your half across back. Call this point G to H. Now we're going to take half of that line GH and put in our first, um, the peak of our dart. So that will be point A to I. And from point C, you're going to take point A to I minus three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. connect I to J. Now we'll just go ahead and complete the back as we already have the side line inserted. Once again, I am going to measure I and J, which is our dart leg. Whatever your measurement is, you use it to pivot and create a guideline. So if it's six inches, seven inches, whichever, I'm just going to use six inches over and over again, making short marks till I make a guideline. Remember, you can always check the written article on the website. It's fully illustrated so you can see diagrams. And from point N, 
we're going to put in the remainder of the waist which is your back waist minus line cj and make sure it's touching one of your guidelines and connect to complete the dart now we're going to do our neck width same as the front this is point D to L. Next is our shoulder. Now first I'm just square a short guideline here to help us with our neckline. Now for the shoulder, same as the front. This is the same shoulder measurement. This is point L to M. Remember, Try and start at point L and then you pivot and stop wherever it will stop on your guideline, which is line E to F. Now I'm using a pencil because we are going to actually add a dart into our shoulder. So from point M, I'm squaring off a short guideline to help me when I add the dart so that we maintain the um, height of our shoulder. Now for that, you're going to put your shoulder measurement plus half an inch or 1.2 centimeters. So once again, you start from point L, but this time we are stopping on that guideline we made from point M, wherever it stops. And we're going to call that point M1. So this is now our actual shoulder line. Now we're going to find the midpoint of line M1. We'll call that point N. We're going to put in our dart, our half an inch dart on either side. So that means you're going to put a quarter of an inch on either side of point N. label this so we have N P and Q I know I haven't done O we're going to get to that so now we're going to establish the position of this dart you're going to connect N to I And from point N along this line, you need to find three quarters of the way before the across back line, or you can just go down about three inches or eight centimeters, nine centimeters. That's just fine. So I had already done P and Q. I'm just going to do O to complete the missing letter and connect. Okay, that's our shoulder dart. Next, we're going to put a guideline from H up and down, just like we did in front. Draw in our armhole from M1, touching that guideline to K. I'm going to square at M1, just a short guideline there. I'll do the same thing at point L, short guideline. And let's draw in our neckline and our armhole. As long as it touches anywhere on that guideline, it is just fine. It doesn't have to touch point H exactly. Always make sure your armhole is smooth at point K or flat. And that completes our front bodice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> our bodice in general, but that's our back. Now we're going to cut it out and true our darts. So I always leave a little paper at the waist before I cut. You're going to 
fold your second dart leg one other side I creased the center and this just helps us fold it easily to close the dart so when the dart is closed you take your curved ruler what you want to do is eliminate that very sharp point so just find a sweet spot where you can continue the curve just there you see and then just smoothing out that line and I'm going to cut along that line and voila as the waist the same thing for the back fold at a point fold at the side part and you can now close the dart easily smooth out our waistline and cut okay next is the shoulder dart same thing I like to fold the one at the side you can fold the other dart line it really doesn't matter everybody has their preferences when you close this one now this I'm just going to use a straight ruler just connect the beginning of the shoulder to the end of the shoulder in a straight line like so cut along this straight line and your shoulder is true and that's basically it but I think there's one more thing we have to check your shoulder your neckline and your armhole so if you line up your neck it should be a smooth curve line up your shoulders it should be a smooth curve in the armhole and that completes our set and make sure everything's just the same way they attach bye and see us in our website